the Lord of God. Uh, I'm going to be reading a book of Jeremiah, I think. I've got a few things on my heart this morning, and I'm just going to trust the Lord and uh, be obedient to Him. No, I don't know how to do this morning, my church. Is. Trust the Lord. Uh, We all get up on uh, Sundays and we've got a choice to make. Yeah. Terry, a lot of times I don't know what it is about Sundays, but for some reason, Brother Phil, Sunday morning, that day is just so comfortable. On Sunday mornings it is. So. But we make a choice to uh, get up and come to the house of the Lord. We make choices during the course of the week that uh, we get up, we go to work, come home, some of us come home, some of us don't, and uh, we eat supper, we watch a little bit of TV, but a carrier, we we'll go back to bed, we we'll listen to the whole routine again the next day. And, uh, but I, I think that if God's people today would, would put God back to where He needs to be, Amen. But the field would be a lot better off. Uh, I love that song that I, that I sung this morning. I got it from Brother Donnie many years ago. There's ever a time that God's children, Brother Terry, have to go back. Because the field that's in the day that we're living in. I like the part in that song where it says we've got to go back to our first love. Yes. I'm going to tell you something. My first love, if it ain't Christ, then you better be checking where your priorities are. Amen. It's that simple. I love you this morning. I love you with all my heart. Bless you. Jeremiah 6 chapter. I'm going to read you a very familiar scripture. Uh, just for my God. 6 chapter of the book of Jeremiah said, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. And uh, that's all we want to read right there. I'll make it over another spot or two. And later it was in Sunday school this morning, and memory serves me correctly. Uh, Brother Mark or somebody had mentioned something about the old path and how we got to get back to it and uh, walk therein. Let me, let me explain something. I believe this brother here that was with us in Sunday school. I made this comment, you know, we live in the day, we live into a time where a lot of people are going to church, and now, those of you, I appreciate the visitors here this morning, but those of you that don't know me, don't understand me, I, I'm plain spoken this morning, and if you don't like it, then I don't know what to tell you, I just speak plain this morning, but we live into a day, we live into a time where people want to go to church, Brother Phil, and they... They want to slide in the back door and they want to sit back and nothing be required of them. And they want the pastor or the preacher to get up, Brother Terry, and uh, they want him to preach for about 10 minutes but, uh, without getting too excited about it. And they want to tell them how good God loves you and how much the Lord loves you and live any way that you want to and that will be pleased with God. And then they want you to put a few dollars in the offer plate and say you're dismissed and They'll leave and not come back again until next Sunday morning, Brother Phil. And that's how a lot of churches have uh, gone to today and the day that we're living in. Today. You say preaching, you're crazy. Well, maybe I am, but I'll ask the truth. And that's the way that people are living. Let me explain something to you. Uh, you and you better pray hard this morning there. But until you get to the spot where God is first in your life, ain't nothing going to change, Brother Terry. It, it's that simple this morning. Now I want you to know something. And that, oh, this morning, I love you with all my heart. And I love to stand up here this morning, nothing greater, and, and preach to you about God's love and tell you how much that God loves you. And how much, Brother Phil, He loves you, daughter, and your lost soul. On that this morning, with I ain't what God's given me. On this morning, I want you to just pray. Now listen, now listen to me now. Now this is what God gave me this morning. It's for the church. Now you can take it, you can leave it. If you want to this morning, I don't know any other way to preach to you now. I'm going just to preach what God's laid on my heart. I wish with it all night long, but you pray for just a few minutes. Now they said, seek out the old path. They said, when you find it, walk her in. They said, we ain't going to walk that way. Now let me tell you something. If you're going to make it to heaven this morning, well, you're going to have to walk on that straight and narrow way. And that is the only way to make it to hell. I don't care what the world tells you. I don't care what society says and what the 
this morning. I want you to just pray. And I'm going to break down a few things. This morning, God will help you. This morning, you're going to be hard pressed now to find anybody else in this community, Brother Phil. I'm more old fashioned than I am. I'm going to tell you something this morning. I believe with all my heart. I'm going to let the Lord have mercy. I'm leaving to come to the house of God. I'm glory be to God. I remember, I'm going to stop right here for a minute. I remember when Moses got out there, Terry, and Moses was talking to God. Hey, man, and when Moses was talking to God, Moses started to walk over brother, where the Lord was. And you remember what God told Moses when he started to do that? Brother Phil, what did God tell Moses? He said, Moses, stand still for a minute. Hold up a second. He said, take off that shoes. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, let me tell you something. Oh, this ain't just a social place. Oh, glory to God. I want to gather out. It's a place to worship. And a place this morning. I want to get the law saved. Amen. 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 Oh, you say preach. Oh, glory to God. Oh, where are you going this morning? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, church, I love you. Oh, let me tell you something. I've got a oh, glory be to God. Amen. I believe Brother Terry and Order, a uh, pastor of church, uh, you're going to have a burden uh, for a church. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, let me tell you something now. Uh, hey, man. Uh, hey, glory to God. Uh, well, you don't know the night. Uh, my glory, Brother Phil. Uh, and I'm not doing this. Uh, I pat myself on the back. Uh, oh, but you don't know the night. Uh, I'm going to bed half the night uh, and can't sleep. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, I'm praying for the church. Hey, Amen. You say, preacher, oh, what are you doing that for? That's my job, Brother Phil. It's my job. Hey, man, let me tell you something. You've got a job, too. You say, preacher, we do. Yeah, we're going to get to it. I hear in a few minutes. If God will help us on this morning, I'm going to tell you what. On this morning, are we walking in the doors back here? Oh, we ought to have nothing on our mind but serving God. I'm going to tell you what. Oh, we ought to leave the devil and all the trash outside the house and come in with nothing but to worship God. Amen. Praise him. What are you preaching for to us? I like it this morning. It made me ever understand. I want your children. I'll go where it be to God. And when your children have messed up and done something wrong, there was a many days, a many times. You can ask my children, my brother Phil, a many times I had to take my belt off and I had to run out of their backside. And you say, preacher, are you still believing? I guess I do. And I can take to the scriptures a little back that up this morning. Oh, glory be to God. And when every time I have to correct them, I sit down with them, Brother Phil, and I talk to them, explain to them why I did what I had to do. Amen? To make them understand what they've done wrong. Preacher, what are you getting out of this morning? Let me tell you something. Amen. And I'm not saying this morning. Don't misunderstand me. Are you all getting off the quiet on me? I'm going to be to God. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm going to listen to me this morning. I'm going to be to God. This is holy place for the children. We are treated like a holy place. And I'm going to say this. And if it offends you, I don't know what to do. Amen. I'm going to God. Unless uh, you're expecting uh, an emergency call uh, uh, from somebody, uh, oh, glory to God, uh, leave your cell phones uh, in your car. Uh, I don't think I'll be calling you. Uh, oh, glory to God, on the phone. Uh, if he calls you, uh, uh, you've got bigger troubles uh, to worry about uh, other than that. Uh, uh, because that uh, could be a hindrance up uh, to the laws this morning. Amen. 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 Now don't misunderstand me. Now I know some of us have to 
yeah. for emergency situations. <laughs> I'm glory be to God. <laughs> and don't take that offense. I know you was right a few weeks ago. <laughs> but don't take offense to that. <laughs> I know you was expecting to call on your brother. <laughs> that ain't what I mean, brother. <laughs> Please don't take offense to it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, glory to God. <laughs> if you bring your, <laughs> you say, preacher, I bring my phone in. <laughs> I use it for my Bible. <laughs> Leave it in the car. I'll go buy your Bible. <laughs> 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 glory be to God. <laughs> This is holy place. We gotta keep it clean. Oh, we gotta keep it holy. There ain't nothing that belongs in here in the sanctuary in the house of God unless it's holy. Bless God. Amen. 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 The Lord came to him. And Haggai, and I said, What are you waiting for? To build a temple back. They said, Ain't time yet. In other words, I said, Lord, ain't, ain't quite time yet. The Lord asked him a simple question. He said, Why does my house lie in waste? When you're building all your fancy houses right. and all this little stuff out here. So, Lord, it ain't time yet. And once Paul went on there and they got a little crop or this or that, and the Bible said they sowed a little and they reaped a little. And they didn't understand why that was. And this is what I like about the Lord. He's straightforward. He tells them just like it is. He said, The reason, my glory be to God, that you sowed a little and reaped a little, my glory be to God is because I'm the one that took it from you. Because you did have in place your priorities of what they belong to. He said stop worrying about your own houses and build my temple back up. Amen. What he told them was it not going to fill? And they said Lord we love to Then we'd have to go get the material to build it, in other words, and do this and do that. Go up to the people, thus said the Lord of hosts, to your way, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified and speak the Lord. It was a short distance to move materials. But yet, Brother Terry, they had to come up with an excuse. Yeah. As to why they could. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How many of you remember the revival we had here a month or so ago? Amen. Do you remember the one night preacher preached about Nehemiah? Remember yeah. that? Yeah. He was determined with a determined mind. Yes. And willing to work. Amen. 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 Same way with us. We want to come in, glory be to God, and give God 30% of our time and expect 100% less than back. It don't work that way. Let me tell you something. God has to be first in your life. Amen. Glory to God. You've got to put God first and foremost in every single thing that you do. Amen. I know some of you. I know this or not. And I know some of you can't for obvious reasons. But we have church here huh? on Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock. Huh? Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? Let me tell you something. Huh? If you huh, are a member of the church, huh, you've got an obligation huh, or to be huh, in God's house. Huh? Oh, glory to God. Huh? You say, preacher, huh? amen. I understand tonight. Huh? Well, some of you may work huh? and some of you can for health reasons. Huh? But if you put huh, excuses huh, in front of God, Church, if you've got an obligation to it, amen. 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 That one didn't go over real well. That was the truth. Amen. We're going to break down a few things here this morning. Amen. A few visitors, I apologize. God help. Bless you. I'd love to preach to you. John 3 16, but ain't what God's given. The pastor's got a job. Yes, he does. My job 
is to lead this church spiritually Amen. according to the Word of God. Amen. 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 My job is to feed the flock Amen. and lead them. Amen. Amen. I got news for you. The Lord of God, can you believe it? Amen. The train's going forward, Brother Phil. Amen. And it's going to be a whole lot easier for this train to go forward if you get off the side of the track and get on the train and get on the track and let's get to town and get busy. Although by staying off of it and not doing what you're supposed to, it's going to be a little bit harder. Amen. 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 I've got a job to lead this church. And I promise you, I told you from day one, oh, glory to God, I will lead in a way pleasing unto the Lord. And I told you from day one, I will not I put up with no foolishness in the house of God. I got no time for it. And I will stand on the word of God if it condemns my own mother in doing it. It is time of people realize.
That's the job of the church. You remember here a few weeks back, I preached a message about Moses. I went up to the, I think it was the mountain there. And he got tired when he was up on top of that mountain. Yeah. Amen. And his hands would fall down. Every time they fall down, the other people would prevail. But when Moses had his hands up, Israel prevailed. Amen. You say, preach. Uh, uh, what's that mean? Uh, Bible said that Moses and her, uh, or Aaron and her, rather, uh, they came out there uh, and they placed the stone uh, uh, for Moses to sit down upon. Uh, and, Mo and Aaron on one side, Moses, uh, and her on the other side. I uh, help him hold his hands up. Uh, that's the job of the church now. Uh, you say, preach. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, it's your job uh, to help me uh, and help each other. Uh, and my job uh, to help you uh, and live in each other all. Uh, and working together. Amen. Are you say preacher? How are we supposed to do that? By getting the same mind and same accord and not let nothing beset us of getting our eyes of not centered on the world of a centered on God and putting God first. Where he belongs. Amen. 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 They have been the cause of what happened. How many got saved that day? Bunch of them, amen. Yeah. Why was that? Because they one mind and one cord. Yes. It's the same thing is true today, the same thing can happen today if we allow it, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher, I don't feel like coming back to church on Sunday night. I'm tired. More out. I know some of you got to work. I understand that. Some of you can't because of health reasons. I understand that. We have 25, 30 people here on Sunday morning. Or better, there's no reason to have 10 people here on Sunday night. Amen. 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 <laughs> say, preacher, what do you say that for? Some of the best services I've ever been in on Sunday night. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some of the best services I've ever been in on Wednesday night with the fifth. Yeah. Amen. You've got an obligation to your church. You need to uphold it. Is that plain and simple? Amen. 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 Now, if I, if I'm not preaching the truth, I'll go back to the Bible. And I'll apologize if I'm not preaching the truth, but I know what the truth is. Yes. Yes. One last thing I want to look at. Listen. God help me. Listen. In the sixth chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible said that the widows and that was being neglected, they laughed of their daily affairs. And the others, did, uh, the others didn't have time to fulfill all these things to do this. The Bible said that they looked out among them. And he told them, he said, seek out among you. I believe it was seven men, wasn't it? Yep. Seven men. Full of the honest report and full of the Holy Ghost. But it set aside over these things here. Preacher, what are you talking about? That's where the deacons came from now. Amen. And that's how they came from. He said, make sure they're of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. My deacons ain't called by God today like a man is called to preach. You believe that, Brother Phil? You know how the deacons are selected? by the church. You believe that? If you believe it, say amen. amen. If you don't, tell me I'm wrong. But that's how the deacons are selected. They said, see God among you. And I'm going to just let you know something. This morning, I've had my eyes open and my ears peeled on some of you this morning. I said, you better get to praying this morning. I love nothing better than to seek out monks, a few of you. Amen. If the Lord will help us, and set it aside because I think it's important for a church to have some deacons this morning. But let me tell you something. You better make sure you're living the life that you're supposed to live. If you can't walk it, glory to God, then you got no business being born. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing with being preached. Amen. A lot of people can talk the talk. They can't walk that walk. Amen. Amen. Preach you off the heart on us this morning. That's only because I love you. 
And I told you I will not. I will not. What other foolishness when it comes to the house of God? When people walk in the doors back here, they ought to be able to see the love of Christ in every single one of us. I'm going to tell you something. They should they have to walk in and sit down and look over and see our brother so and so or sister so and so. I texted somebody. Well, as soon as this preacher shuts up, I will meet some Dr. Dennis for a chicken. I'm going to tell you something. That ain't what they ought to see. What they ought to see is love. And compassion in you. That's your worry about their soul, glory to God. Amen. Amen. That's what they ought to see in us. Amen. 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 Listen. I'm going to tell you something What's wrong with the church today, and I'm not talking about Bible Baptist. I'm talking about the church, the baptized body. Amen. We've allowed every wind and doctrine to come in from off them streets. We brought the world in with the church. And we sat it down by the field and said, it's all right. I'll do it any way you want to. I got news for you this morning. And this ain't very popular. If it does not line up with the Word of God, we should turn our back to it. Turn our back to it. I done knew I wasn't going to get very many men this morning. I done put that in my brain. But I love you, church. I love you with all my heart. And now listen to me. If we're going to serve God, we got to do this together. There's no big eyes, there's no little ewes. You remember when school, when we played tug of war, they put a big, they put a big pile of mud or water or whatever in the middle of it was. Amen. And then you have, you have a few people on this side and a few people on this side. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'll have Terry stand up for a minute. I'll stand up for you for a minute, brother. Matthew, come here for a second. You stand right here. Matthew, you get right over here and stand. Amen. And you know what they do? They would stand here and they put a rope between the two of them. You, right? You pull it and you pull it. Amen. Maybe you, maybe you pull a little bit, a little bit harder. And we start pulling Terry in. Amen. That's how they would work. You know what we need to do? Not pull them against one another. Go over behind Terry. That's what we need to do. Oh, we need to get on the same side as each other. Preacher, who are we fighting? Who's the adversary? It ain't me. It ain't you. It ain't Brother Phil. You know who it is? It's the devil and the things of this world. And then when the church gets behind what they're supposed to do and gives them a big old tug, old slew foot, old wind up in the mud, where are you going? Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. I appreciate that. That's what it takes. It's just getting on the same. Side, sure. Amen. And serve God love one another. Amen. There's plenty enough room. There's plenty of enough room. Amen. Amen. There's jobs in the church yes. for everybody, from the youngest to the oldest. Amen. 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 There is. <laughs> but it has to be left. I'm gonna park right here for a second, I'm gonna shut up. I talked about the deacons in the church. Listen. I made a comment to somebody here a while back. They asked me how many deacons we have here, and I said nine. They said, boy, ain't you lucky. You ain't got nine. Let me explain to you something about what a deacon does real quick. A deacon's got a few jobs. It's to serve the church, help the pastor, and the other job is to seek the acquaintance of the widows and Make sure the older ones and the widows don't go to family. Amen. Yeah. believe that this morning. Yeah. That, that's what their job is. But I, I, I've seen it in many occasions where, where deacons think that, amen, amen, where deacons think, and I'm just going to be yes. honest with you, a lot of deacons think that their job is to tell the pastor right. what he needs to be doing. I've got news for you this morning. Yeah. God's given the pastor. It's the pastor's job to lead the church right. the way it's supposed to be led. Yeah. Now, if he ain't leading it, Way, huh? Then the scripture says huh? you better find you another one that's that and simple huh? about it. Huh? But if he's doing what he's supposed to do huh? through the obedience of God, huh? uh, the deacons are supposed to be behind him, huh? governing huh? yeah. and supporting him. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Huh? They're supposed to handle huh? uh, the affairs of the church, huh? and it's something that's of the important. 
offerings. Uh, they can bring it to the pastor. It ain't their job in the field uh, or to rule the pastor uh, or rule the church. Amen. 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 That's true. Amen. I've seen some that think it's their job to tell the pastor what to do. Uh, that's the farthest thing from the gospel I've ever seen in my life. Amen. Real quick, you've got Christ as the shepherd, amen? Amen, right. And you've got the pastor as the under shepherd. Yes. And this ain't old. Bear with me. And then you've got the deacons, or in that case, I would say the elders of the church, if you will, the old men of the church behind the pastor and the rest of the flock behind them. Now, don't misunderstand what the way I just said. Now, that don't mean that the pastor is more important than that three-year-old young child that's back here in the very back. But he, Jesus loves him just as much as he loves that three-year-old. But well, let me explain to you. In the army, you've got to have order. You've got to have, you've got to have, what's the highest rank in the army, brother? Four-star general. Then you've got to have a few below him. And then what's a sergeant? He's down pretty low on the pole. What would happen if that sergeant went up and told that four-star general the pilot's his shoes? I'd say he'd be peeling taters for a while. Well, you, I would say he would. You say, preacher, what are you getting at? Hey, my, that's the pastor's job. I believe the church pleasingly under what does say the word of God, according to God. And the deacons to get behind them. If there are any of the elders of the church, hey, my, and walk behind and use them with one another and the flock of following. Not that this one's any greater than this one is, but we got to do it together and walk in love and peace. And if we'll do that, we won't give them a place under the adversary and the laws will come in and they'll run out by saying, what's wrong with them people? There's something going on over there. Amen. That's right. Preacher, how is that possible? The Bible said that a sinner cannot sit in the congregation of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Church, I love you. Listen, I love you with all my heart. Listen, I swear I knew. And they want nothing. <coughs> Listen, my children, when they mess up, I'd be gone all week. Brother Phil, I'd come home, I'd be gone all week. And my kids were younger, and I'd want nothing. I'd love to see them run outside the truck and say, Daddy's home. Amen. And I'd go grab one and give them a hug. And yeah, you need to walk tighter. <laughs> <laughs> For what? I just got home. Well, he needs it. And I'd have a hard time walking. He was going to walk in. Yeah. I didn't know what he'd done. Amen. Said, you need to walk in. Pray. Well, after I was home for a few hours, I realized why he needed to walk. <laughs> but I didn't like it. When I had to take him in there and take the belt to him, I didn't like him, but still I did. It hurt me worse than it hurt them, whether they believe it now or not. Sometimes you gotta correct them, amen. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to, it ain't because you don't like them when you're mad at them, it's because you love them. Amen. Amen. And you want to help them. And you want to show them, say, hey, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about here. Amen. 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 It's like a 17-year-old boy. I'll use Brother Phil. He's been on this road a while. It's like a 17-year-old boy coming to Brother Phil and asking his advice on marriage or work or this or that. And Brother Phil, tell him what he knows and the mistakes he might have made. And I was going to tell your boy walking away saying, that man's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. He's foolish. I was at 17 years old one boy. Amen. And I thought Mommy and Daddy were the two craziest people on the face of this earth. I did. You know what happened a few years down the road? Yeah. Reality said that. They got smart. <laughs> And I realized at the time they wasn't as dumb as I thought they were. No, I was dumb when I was digging them all. Yeah. They were just trying to help me and show me. Yeah. But I was young and ignorant and didn't want to listen to them. Yeah. Oh, how I've been so much better off if I listened. Oh, yeah. so much better off. But sometimes we got to make mistakes. That's how we work. Yeah. Yeah. Where you get that? we got to do this together. Yes. I need you as much as you need me. Amen. 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 Maybe some of you don't like me. I don't know. Maybe you find somebody else with a better job. I don't know. But I need 
church broke the sin, the lost people saved. Yeah. And in seeing those people uh, that very seldom give a testimony, uh, very seldom say anything, uh, get up and sing a song. Uh, get up and say, hey, pray for this person uh, or that person. Uh, that's things a pastor sees uh, that others may not see. Uh, that's church growth now. Uh, it ain't about what 200 million congregation books. Uh, uh, that ain't what it's about. Uh, it's getting them in, uh, getting them saved. Uh, and if you can keep them in, uh, at that point, you've accomplished something yeah. great. Amen. 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 As they say. <laughs> if you're not doing what God wants you to do,